win some Proland tires, win some Proland tires, or you can win, get this puppy out of here, a winch. And it even comes with this little worn sticker. How cool is that, eh? <laughs> so guys, that's gonna be this year's competition. Some guys need tires, some guys need a winch. Write me in the comment which of the two you need and I shall put you in the draw. Now let's get back into today's video. So on last week's show, I was out with a couple of friends that had two Frankenstein builds. And basically, they made me look stupid. So on this week's show, I'm going to upgrade our T-Rex 4 Sport, which we have been upgrading for the last three years on this channel, making it better and better and better. And you can go back and actually see what we've done to this truck. But today, I'm going to take a part Frankenstein and put it into this truck. What does Frankenstein mean? It actually means you have a chassis, you put your own, your own axles, you, you, you buy your own shock absorbers, all the parts, everything that the, from your differentials, if, if you have a split between the diffs, if you have low gears, high gears, um, if you're able to change between them, everything gets purchased by you and you obviously try and find the best parts on the market and you build the best truck that is actually possible out of all those parts. So I'm not quite doing that. I'm keeping my chassis, my TRX4 Sport chassis, but I've got a couple of changes like shock towers where I'm just gonna position my shocks a little bit different to keep that truck glued to the rock when we we're hill climbing, because these guys didn't even pop a wheel. Like their wheels didn't even come off the rock. They just stuck the whole time. So my biggest issue on this truck is the body. Okay, it's a scale body, looks good. But the back of the truck always gets hooked up. It slips out of the pins, out of, out of the body post. My magnets in front always give up. She go back, I always do this off camera and I mount the truck again. And then I start filming again from the beginning. I'm frankly sick and tired of this. And I want to build a Frankenstein body that is all thought through that we can make it even more capable without the body. So if I take this body off and I just run the chassis, it clears almost every obstacle. I put the body back on, I try and clear the same obstacle, it doesn't work because the body is actually just hindering it. So I've sat down, I've done a little bit of calculation, measurements here and there and there, and I've come up with an idea. So let me show you what I've done. First of all, this is going to go into the trophy wall. <laughs> dun, 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 trophy wall. Okay, let's put this aside. So here's my idea. As you can see, I've 3D printed myself another blazer body. But this is not just any blazer body. This is going to be my conversion blazer body. <laughs> so first thing we do, we cut off the back. Don't need that one more. And then we're going to cut out the windows and the, literally all the windows. So windscreen, side windows, and I have 3D printed myself a back plate for the pickup body. Or as in South Africa, you call it the bucky. Now, what I've done is I've 3D printed a dashboard. Comes with a little print that you can actually get your cluster in as well and a steering wheel it doesn't move I know it's the first thing I thought of I'm gonna make this move but I'm running out of time a little bit so at the moment I've glued it in so first thing is I've cut the back off to kind of have no hangover no hangover at all so when I put this into place you can see there where the chassis ends basically, that's where the body ends. The front, I still wanna keep it a little bit scale, but what I've done on that side, in order to keep this body as low as possible, I've trimmed off the bottom section of the area where the bumper kind of comes on. So I'm literally flat and flush with the grill. And on the sides, I've taken off about a centimeter of the body as well to get it closer and lower down. 
so my weight is as low as possible and I do not have any top weight so basically I don't want the truck to be top heavy so I'm pushing it the weight low as possible and even in the body I'm pushing it down as low as possible so next thing I've done is I've 3d printed myself some racing seats yes mounted them basically on the T-Rex 4 the one just fits directly onto the receiver box and the other one I had to 3d print a little block which is 3.5 centimeters high place that on there so that I still have a little bit of clearance on my controller. And I used to have my ESS Dual Plus sitting in front to get more weight down on the truck. I don't have that space anymore because I've mounted this beautiful dashboard. That means there is no more space for my ESS Dual Plus. So I've mounted it in the back and I've 3D printed myself a little radiator which I still need to kind of figure out what kind of pipes I'm going to put on there. <laughs> All right. So now my setup, I think what you need to do is come a little bit closer. So I have got shock towers 3D printed and mounted on the TRX4. These shock towers you can find at thingiverse.com. Just punch in shock towers for TRX4 and this is what will pop up. So on the back, I have mounted the shock in the lowest, lowest position and a little bit forward. So on the rear, the shock absorber is mounted at the lowest point, not allowing the truck to articulate very far. That means the chassis stays kind of in a position. So when it's climbing, it can't actually articulate very far with when the weight starts going down on the truck. On the front, it's the opposite way around. I don't want the truck to actually pull out of its spring a lot, so I've mounted the shock absorber as high as possible on the shock tower. Now you can obviously use any shock towers, but this is the rock crawling, hill climbing setup that I've got that in the front, it's as high as possible and in the rear, it's as low as possible. Enabling the truck not to actually get out of its suspension. When it is down in its suspension it actually has hardly any suspension at all the springs are with the weights and everything so once once everything's mounted you will see there is no suspension on the truck at all so let me get started on the front bumper so for the front bumper i found a metal bumper which is as thin as i could find it i didn't want any width or anything sitting underneath the the body of the truck so i found this slim shady bumper and this is kind of the best thing where in my head i'm going to clear more obstacles <laughs> so i had to bend a little bracket then what i've done is i've 3d printed this bull bar that is for the trx4 slides into the front here perfectly and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount, okay, I have 3D printed and glued on a radiator on the side. So that's going to look quite cool on the side there. And this little plate here is going to be holding my winch and my bumper. So I have a dual motor winch on here, giving me a little bit more weight in the front of the truck, pushing the truck down, whereby the setting of the truck will not have any suspension with this weight on the nose. So let me quickly put this together. Okay, that is super tight. This is solid print so that we don't break it on the trail. Let's get the bumper hooked up on the front of this plate. There we go, metal bumper. And now comes the winch. I'm going to thread everything through the middle section here. So when the winch does come out top, 
my wires are already threaded and I don't have to worry about nicking them, nipping them or anything like that. Let's mount the screws on the bottom. There we go. That setup is tight. So with this setup, I'm going straight into the chassis of the TRX4 Sport, adding quite a lot of weight to the nose. And I know what you're saying, or I know what you're thinking right now. This is quite high up, and you're right. It is quite high up, but I'm going to live with that. Because everything else that I've done is basically low. <laughs> okay so i've got that tightened up let's root these cables can i fit it through the side here yes i can let's root these cables through here and in the area of our receiver there that is kind of where i want them now, to mount the body, I am not going with the standard or conventional body mounts. I have made myself some brackets at the bottom here that literally get screwed on with five screws on each side. And this body, you can't just take it off. You can't just unclip something and take it off. But my whole reasoning behind it was the windows are out so I can actually get to my electronics fairly quickly and fairly easily. So these are the brackets that I've made and they basically hug the rock sliders. These are the boat sided rock sliders that have a little bit of an angle which are also 3D printed from Thingiverse. Literally I am going to mount that on there. Five screws in the bottom and five screws into the body. So these are little 2.5 millimeter screws, self-tapping screws that I'm just screwing straight into the 3D printed part and I've tapered them so that they sit flush. So nothing actually gets hooked on the screw. If a rock comes, it can just slide right over that. So this is where we are right now. The body has been cut out in the front in the grill area so that it fits around the winch because the winch actually sits inside the body. So I gotta be a little bit careful here. I have my cutout at the back for the battery as well. Sliding this in and placing the body in its position. So you can kind of see how the winch sits inside the grill. But before I carry on, I am still missing something in the back here. So let's take that off. So in the back, I didn't actually want a bumper because the bumper will just be too far out, too low. It'll, it'll get hooked up again and and and. So what I've actually gone and done is, tun, 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 I have built myself a little frame which tucks in to the back section of the original TRX. TRX4 Sport, um, the old bumper, which you can flip up and down. This one is sitting low. So these two, they slide in there and the others literally just get screwed on to this area over here. So let me mount that quickly. So on the rear bracket, I have these two screws in here, which hold the bumpers in place. They only have the winding literally uh, a third and the other two thirds are flat. What I do with that, I slide the bar, roll bar, whatever you want to call it. I call it the bumper bar. Slide that in there. And in the front section, I screw it directly onto the rock slider.
So now these two pins actually slide through and hold the bars on the rear, rear frame, rear bumper, however you want to call it. First one is in and just adjusting the second one. There we go. So now that is sitting rough and tough. Metal bumper in the back and a metal frame that in my head won't hook up on any rocks. It's tucked in, it's high up. So all that's left for me to do now is mount the body. And let's slip that on here, making sure I pass my antenna. So taking the body in between the seats and the aerial, sliding it right in between here, making sure it hugs the front of the winch and it passes on the sides here, it passes the framework and then it should just pop into place. And then I have the same five screws going into the bodywork at the bottom. So in brackets, I have 10 screws on each side, making it 20 screws that are holding in the bodywork. Oops, that was a bit wrong. Uh, let's do that again. These are really minute. I mean, I don't really need a long screw or a big screw because it can't go any further in. <laughs> the thickness of the 3D printed body is probably 1.5 millimeters. So I don't really need very long screws. Flipping it around and putting the last five screws in on this side. There we go. One, two, three, four, and the last one, if I can find it, number five. So, this body is on here. You can pick it up, you can pick the truck up nicely. This body is on there. The only thing I'm missing is to taper the body to the actual framework that I've built. I have mounted two little brackets that I can take the body off and on, and that also gets screwed on with two little screws. Let's get that in there. Hopefully I find a hole as well. <laughs> I don't really have to worry about these screws a lot. So once they're in, the, in their position, they stay in their position. There we go. Got it. And the last one. Same on this side. Flipping that little lip over. Grabbing it with the little screw. The same 2.5 or even 3 millimeter. I don't even know which size they are. I think they're 2.5s. And screwing that all the way right through the body. And I've obviously grinded that flat so that it keeps my fingers <laughs> from slicing up. There we go. So that's kind of what that looks like. Got our bar in place, got our body in place. Our body is tight, it's not going anywhere. No rocks are going to move this body. Magnets are not gonna come off and body mounts are not gonna move or shift while I'm rock crawling. This will always stay in its position. Now, seeing that we have the weight on the truck, you can actually see there is no suspension. The suspension is as low as possible so when I do go up into a hill climb or climbing a very steep obstacle, the body or the truck actually just sticks and stays on the rock. How far I can go with it, we shall see. But this is my idea of getting the truck and the body in harmony so that they both work at its best. 
There's just one thing missing. We need bigger tires. So I got myself some Mickey Thompson's 2.2s to fit onto this build. So only one thing left to do is to get the original TRX4 Sport tires off of here, which have also been modified. The foams have been cut. Uh, inside I literally have a dual foam because the outside of the foam has been cut. I have a video on that which I will put a link down in the description. And here we go. These are these are the 1.9s and these are the 2.2s. As you can see they are a tiny bit bigger. Let's mount these quickly. Oh, come on. Yeah, they are sitting on beadlocks, so they are a little bit tighter to fit over the little nut on the inside. It is a spacer nut which pushes the tire out a little bit. There you go, number one. Let's put this T-Rex 4 on the side there. I mean, these tires are great. I really like these tires, especially the second conversion. So first conversion was the foam, making it a dual foam. The eyes outside of the tire is really, really soft. And then I took out the little knobbies, giving a little bit more distance and space in between them. I have a video on that as well. So I will leave that link down in the description for you guys as well. Making sure everything sits and mounting this aluminium beadlock on there for aesthetic reasons i'm going to put my hang on this is the wrong one my lockers on there my manual lockers the front only has them so the rear won't get any the rear will stay open and i do find the back of the truck a little bit empty so I have got a plastic wheel. This is not a RC graded wheel. Very light, a lot, a lot lighter than original uh, TRX4 wheel. I am just going to mount that down here with a long screw. Not fussing about. I kind of can catch it over here. And Tighten it down just a touch. Don't have to tighten it down a lot. And it is in. So, I know. I know what you're thinking. I have added weight to the top with my <laughs> soundbar, the ESS Dual Plus, with a tire. And I have also added weight with the winch sitting where it is. So the winch is actually quite a heavy unit. It will help the nose of the truck stay on its front wheels. The way the truck is set up with its suspension, I am hoping that this is going to work perfectly on the hill climb that we are going to do next weekend. So that is fitting quite nicely. The truck <laughs> it feels fantastically sturdy. Um, I'm hoping my shakedown adventure next weekend is going to survive the shakedown. So next Saturday, we are going on to the same trail in that Barranco, which is literally just, we walk down to the bottom and we hill climb the entire trail up the mountain. It is about a three hour trail, but I think we're going to just be doing one hour or one and a half. <laughs> so I'm going to be bringing this and my other two friends are going to be bringing their Frankenstein builds. I know this is not a full Frankenstein build, but body-wise and, well, maybe a little bit from my shock towers and how I've set everything up from the shock point of view, maybe that's a little bit of a Frankenstein section going into that. So anyway, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to keep up and I'm hoping that with the setup and with the body, the truck is going to be a lot more capable than it was in the last run that I did up against them. because. That last time I really felt stupid. 
So I know the truck is not finished. I still have some cool ideas. First of all, paint. I have got an idea of spray painting it like a stardust gray. And I think this kind of a bar system, I still would like to protect the roof section and maybe the A pillars a little bit by maybe making a, another cage system or coming from the side, going up the A pillar over the roof, down the other side, coming over the B pillar over the roof, down the other side and joining them up or maybe with a cross member in well, this is all going to be an exterior cage or maybe I'll make it an interior cage. Maybe that's even a better idea. Running them on the inside might even look cool. Anyway, so the truck is not really finished. First, we're going to take it on a shakedown next week, Saturday, and then we're going to proceed with the build. At least I have some ideas for it. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Click that notification bell, subscribe to the channel. Don't miss your chance on winning your set of tires, your set of Proline tires or a winch. The competition is end of September and we shall see you next time. Cheers, bye.